I'm Yong Zhao. I'm a um, presidential chair and uh, also director of the Center for Global and Online Education in the College of Education at the University of Oregon. And today I would like to briefly talk about my recent book, World Class Learners, Educating Creative and Entrepreneurial Students. I wrote this book really trying to signal the urgent need for a paradigm shift in education. Because today, as the world, we see a lot of unemployed youth. Even over 50% of our recent college graduates are unemployed or underemployed. At the same time, we see companies, businesses uh, have uh, facing the challenge of talent shortage. So we have this talent mismatch. Uh, basically, it means that our education has arrived at the point that we need to seek a new way of defining educational quality a new way of teaching our children to face the 21st century. So technology has always, always worked to change society so that when society changes, we redefine the value of talents. Uh, for example, in the agricultural society, we valued manual labor. We valued, in my village, uh, how to drive a water buffalo. We valued our ability to plow the field. And then when industrialization happened, we began to value modern sciences, technology. And today, I think we have arrived at a new age, a time to redefine the value of knowledge and talents again. And for example, nowadays, you know, what we are seeing that uh, automation or machines have taken away a lot of jobs, replaced a lot of manual, even some cognitive jobs, for example, accounting, uh, search engines. And of course, globalization has brought a massive uh, outsourcing or offshoring of jobs to lower cost locations or other countries. And so that means uh, America, or most developed countries actually, is facing the challenge of uh, creating the new middle class. Obama and many other economists have noticed that in the US, for example, since 1970s, we have a shrinking middle class. We have bipolar growth, we have the, the top end uh, is growing fast, so is the bottom end. But if you examine the two growing sectors, the top end most in are the creative sector, and the bottom end is the service sector. So what we need is to rethink education as a process to recreate the new middle class. So the traditional middle class were people who complied with a curriculum, who had good test scores, who were able to uh, fulfill the homework and to look for jobs. Those were I call uh, employee-oriented education. So education traditionally has been preparing employees. So that's where we start with the curriculum. We try to start with describing what kind of skills, knowledge is required. And today we continue to do that. We try to fix that model through the common core, the common assessment, because that outcome-based seems to be able to uh, produce a more accountable educational system. Uh, that's why we kind of follow uh, countries like China, uh, Singapore, who have produced high scores on the PISA and teams and other international assessments. And however, that's mistaken because the creative class is not necessarily the traditional employee class that you cannot find jobs. We need people who is going to be able to create jobs. So I would say new middle class is first of all creative class. That's a Richard Florida's argument called the rise of the creative class. Uh, basically it means that creativity may be uh, in the past reserved for a few great people. And today it means job security. It means that if you want to be employed, if you want to find a job, you have to be creative. And better yet, you want to create your own job. So and the second element of the new middle class is what I would call the entrepreneurial class. That is, you are here assuming that you know, there is no job for you. You, or every student, I mean, that every children, we have to help our children understand that they have to become job creators. In the U.S., there are so many opportunities. Globalization, technology, when they take jobs away, they create new opportunities. You know, for example, you know, when, when robotics, uh, replaced uh, workers on the assembly line, then they created jobs for those who invent or make robotics. When you go checking on, online, you uh, uh, checking your flight online, at United or Delta or any other airlines, uh, we've replaced a lot of uh, people working at the counters. But then it's created jobs for people who are making those apps and online systems. 
So we have to help our children not to lament on the fact of jobs lost, but look at opportunities that we can create. So we have to rethink today what we have. Today as an entrepreneur, you know, it doesn't only mean business entrepreneur, it means social entrepreneurs, it means intrapreneurs, policy entrepreneurs. Entrepreneur in, in essence is a spirit, that is we do not expect other people to solve our problem. We solve our own problems, we create our own solution. So that's the second element of the new middle class, that is we have to be creative, we have to be entrepreneurial. The third one I think is, is amazing, that is we have arrived at a new age. In this age, we consume different talents. The traditionally undervalued talents have become more valuable. You know, I often use the example like uh, singers, dancers, uh, even like uh, people like Kim Kardashian, all those people. Traditionally, you may think they were not valuable, but now they apparently have rise and uh, meet some needs. So in the 21st century, some would call this the age of abundance. We consume different products and different services. And for example, personalization. We come from personalization. It's a very interesting example. We, we have so many choices. You know, we got uh, all kinds of shampoo, all kinds of cereal, all kinds of uh, potato chips. That means that we want choice. And then we reward people who can create those choices. We also consume psychological and spiritual products a lot more. We watch a lot more TV. We read a lot more different books. We enjoy different kind of music. We consume more art. For example, everybody now has some way to consume different kind of art. Unlike, you know, let's say 400 years ago, uh, art consumption was only reserved for the wealthy, for the very few, and today it's much more accessible. Therefore, we have uh, uh, more use or more value in the artist, you know, the, in the people in uh, almost all the whole spectrum of how our gardeners multiple intelligences have become valuable. So the three elements I think will be very interesting in the future is can we help our schools to cut with children to, who are creative, who are entrepreneurial, but also very importantly to help enhance the strength of every child. Today the traditional paradigm, the employee money paradigm, is trying to fix children's deficit. Because we only think a certain type of talents, skills and knowledge are valuable, not everything else. So when the common core prescribes what's valuable, it discriminates against other people. So what I think 21st century, the true education model should be one that's called uh, the entrepreneur-oriented model. We want to enhance every child's strength, not fix their deficit. But of all of this has to happen in a globalized context. Because we live in a globalized world, our children have to become globally competent, entrepreneurial, and creative. I think that's the goal. To make this happen, there's a lot of theories actually has happened. To this, technology helps a lot. So in my book, I outline uh, three major elements of this new paradigm. Number one is called student autonomy or personalized educational experiences. That is, we want everybody to have a chance to develop their strength, to pursue their passion, and I want us to remember, we don't have to judge the value of individual talents anymore. I mean, you, honestly, if Lady Gaga is useful, anyone can be useful. The number second uh, uh, idea about beyond trying to define the education, personal educational experiences as the curriculum, we should move our pedagogy into the product-oriented learning. That is, we all engage children in making things, in market things, in making books, making movies, and understand how they can market their products globally. Today with YouTube, today with eBay, they have a global market. But our children have to understand how to reach to other people. When I say market, it does not necessarily mean making money, but simply meaning you understand other people's needs and how do you want to make use of your talents and knowledge and time to help better other people's lives. And finally, the context. Our schools has to open its doors not confined learning opportunities within their school property. And geography or locality should not define learning opportunities anymore. So the third element in my book, I talk about globalized campus. So three things, student autonomy, that's personalized learning as the curriculum, product-oriented learning as the pedagogy, and globalized campus as the context of learning. Thank you.